What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay mini to rescue. Today we're going to be working on some Karadron Overlords, Caradron Overlords, Caradron, something like that. Uh, this model is the Brock Grungson of those Overlords sent in by Matt H. And he had painted this a while back and sent me an email and asked me if I would just redo the paint job because while it actually doesn't look too bad, you start getting up close and there are some minor issues, but honestly, not too bad at all. So the first step in taking care of this model is stripping the paint away. And this time I used 97% isopropyl alcohol, which works really well. Uh, honestly, I don't feel like it works as well as LA's Totally Awesome in my Sonic Cleaner, but I'm still waiting for that to come in the mail. So I don't have it, so isopropyl alcohol will have to do, and it does work. So if you don't have a sonic cleaner, that's always a good option. So after the paint was stripped, I just went through and tried to clean up as much as I could. And I looked for any mold lines or any gaps, any other issues with the model, and I filled those in using Milliput. So the idea behind this model is that I'm going to basically fix it up and repaint it to match the overlords that I've done in the past on this channel. So starting with Vallejo Surface Primer Black and then using Liquitex's Bright Gold Ink through the airbrush, I'm going to do the entire model. This gold through the airbrush works pretty well, not as well as some of the gold sprays I've used out of a can. but it'll get the job done and you have a good amount of control with the airbrush. The other idea behind this is I don't want to take it too far. I want it to be a little bit above tabletop standard. So, you know, all the colors blocked in, some washes, some different techniques. And then we're going to do some things on top of that that kind of take it to the next level without having to put in an insane amount of work on a really cool model like this. Using a sepia ink through the airbrush, I'm going to do a lot of the shadows for this gold. And I've been finding a lot lately that using a really dark brown like this ink to do golds and coppers works remarkably well. It doesn't disturb the gold too much, it just adds a very natural shadow and because it's an ink, you're getting a really glossy finish just like the gold already has. Someone mentioned, I think a month or two ago, that Vince Venturella did a video on this about shading golds with some kind of brown ink or some such. I haven't watched the video yet, I should probably do that to, you know, learn something. But for now, I've just experimented and it's worked really well. Coming in with Screaming Bell, this is one of the better metallics from Citadel, in my opinion. I'm going to do a little bit more variation on the gold just to break up that single color. Continuing to break up that gold color, I'm going to bring in a bad and black and I'm going to use this on all the undersides of those float pods. You'll probably also notice that there's a lot of silver on this model now and I don't know where that footage went, but I used Vallejo's steel to just kind of fill in random bits to continue to break that color up.
Brackarth flesh for all the tubes across the model, and I also used it on his hat for that insignia. A wash of Reichland flesh shade for all of the gold and copper. Gnome oil for all of the silver. Using Nagaroth Knight, we're going to do something similar that I did on the last set of Overlords, and we're going to introduce a good amount of purple into the model to offset with the yellow gold and the orange, you know, coppery color. And for the most part, I'm just going to put this in this kind of recessed area on that top pod, and then I'm also going to do all of the rudder wings on the back. And to brighten this up and give a little bit more contrast to the model overall, I'm going to put gray sear on the tops of all of these little fins. So like I said in the beginning, I wanted to take this model to just a little bit above tabletop standard and then introduce a few different things into it to kind of offset it from just being a normal model. So what I'm going to do is take this turquoise ink, which is a nice bright blue, and I'm just going to place it around the model on any bits that could be glowing or emitting some sort of energy that this, whatever it is, is giving off. I'm also going to do this on the base, and the reason I'm doing that is I want it to be kind of an underneath OSL, like, you know, he's flying down onto the battlefield, and they're trying to pick up some ore to power their sky ships. So obviously all of these overlords that I've done in this group, which I'll show at the end, all have this blue glow emitting from them. So, you know, within my own narrative, they're all running off of this funky ore. So you can see on this base, I kind of made a fissure in the middle and I put some different stones and, and grasses around there and there's that blue turquoise emitting from that so I'm just gonna lightly go onto a lot of the reflective areas underneath and try and create a bit of an OSL like he's gotten pretty close to it and to really set that off we're gonna have to add some white into it we're gonna focus this kind of in the middle of everything of all of the glowing areas and what that's gonna do is really give that effect that it's glowing and, it, and it's kind of hot. I 
I also decided to pretty much ignore the flying stand. I got glue on it and there was some other stuff on it and I really didn't feel like replacing it. I don't have any extras on me. So I just decided to paint over it and make it part of the model in some way. I'm not sure how it fits into the narrative, but you know, if anything, I can snap it off and replace it at a later date. So in the end, I think we achieved something pretty fun. And a lot of the times when you're painting, you know, you get caught up in wanting to be perfect and making it a very specific way. And sometimes you just need to run with whatever story you've told yourself about the model and just have fun with it. So thank you very much, Matt H, for sending this in and allowing me to kind of go nuts with it. And I encourage everyone to thank Matt down in the comments. So like I said earlier, sometimes it's just nice to have fun while you're painting. And in this case, I definitely had a good time. And I felt, you know, like I got out of my head a little bit and kind of rejuvenated myself and my want to paint more models. Also, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Let me know what model you painted that you had a lot of fun doing. And not that model that, you know, was a slog to get through and not very fun, but you liked the outcome and that's fun, but a model that during each paint stroke and each new piece that you found and discovered that you actually had a good time. Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed something about this video. I've been Casey, and I will see you in the next video.